Well, let's talk about in this video electrical current through the heart and what the heart actually does with your blood. You can see that blood is actually something that moves based off of what you're doing. And there's going to be control mechanisms that we're going to talk about in our next exam. Basically, you can see that when you're exercising, this makes a lot of sense. The majority of your blood is going to go to your muscles. There's going to be a little bit going to our renal, which is going to be our kidneys. They filter. A little bit going to digestion. A little bit going to our brain. And then you'll see some other areas going through. But then let's see what's happening when you're resting and sort of studying or whatever. The majority of that blood now is going to digestion, renal for filtration, and to the brain. And then you could see that a little bit's going to the coronary. The coronary, you could see that it was at 4% when you're resting and 4.3. Um, and that, that's just because you're exercising, you need a little more energy. And then look at how little the muscles is versus compared to before. So your body gets to control these mechanisms based off of need. The heartbeat um, is basically controlled by an electrical current that moves through the heart. And we'll talk a little bit about PQRST waves soon. But both the aorta and the ventricles um, basically open and close at the same time. Let me rephrase that. The aorta is open at the same time. The valves open to let the blood go into the ventricles at the same time. The valves close at the same time. And then finally, the ventricles squeeze to push blood either out of the pulmonaries or out of the aorta. And so your heart is definitely a double pump. We hear this sound when you're listening to it, and it's a lub-dub noise. The lub is going to be these valves opening and closing. They make you a large lub noise. And the dub is going to be these semi-lunar valves. There's one here and one that you can't really see in this picture right over here. And they're closing, and that gives a softer dub noise. The lub is louder, and that's because these valves went from open to close. And then finally, when the, the dub comes, that's going to be these little semi-lunar valves opening and then closing. So this is the dub, and this is the lub noise when these guys close. This is all controlled through action potential. And it's very similar to how action potential works in the skeletal muscle. Um, we actually did this in 201, so I'm going to kind of skip it for here. But I left these PowerPoints in just in case you need a recap. And I'll probably put a video in just so you can kind of catch up and see what that is. But let's talk about how the heart makes electricity and moves through. We have these different parts of the heart that pass electricity through. And it does it because, number one, it wants to make that the heart gets electrical current at even areas at the same time. And as the current moves through, different sort of things are occurring in the heart uh, that makes it um, do what it needs to do. The heart will depolarize 100 times per minute, which means that it can open and close and do all these actions 100 times in a minute, which is amazing. Um, we have these different valves that control this, or sorry, different areas that produce electricity. Our first one is going to be the SA node. It's going to be in the right atrium. I like to call it by the name that I think most people know it as, which is the pacemaker node. And what it does is it depolarizes faster than other areas. And this is where we're going to make electricity. And the electricity will slowly work its way through the heart to do certain tasks. As the electrical current moves from the SA node to eventually our next area, which is going to be our AV node, um, there's a little bit of a delay. And the delay allows for, on both sides, these um, atriums to open and have blood come in from either the rest of the bar heart, from the um, superior and inferior vena cava, and dump it into the aorta. And on this side, we're going to dump blood in from the pulmonaries. And the pulmonary will go ahead and fill blood here. So this will be oxygenated. This will be deoxygenated. So both of these guys will open at the same time while the tricuspid and bicuspid valves will be closed. 
if we keep going, what happens is the node will pass electrical current and it'll go to that septum. The septum is what separates the um, two walls, the atriums and the ventricles away. Um, and there's a little bit of a delay. The delay is coming because the electrical current is produced here and the electricity has to actually go through the side of the walls of the atrium. And then when it finally gets there, it hits this next thing called the AV node or atrioventricular node. Good name because it's in between the atrium and the ventricle. So there's a little bit of a delay and that delay allows that these atriums will completely open. When the electricity comes here, what's going to happen is the atriums will sort of close, not allowing blood to come in anymore. As, well, let's go to the next picture. As we have the electricity coming through, it's going to go ahead and pass. And what will happen is both of these valves will open. As the electricity keeps going through, these valves will close. They really only happen when the electrical current right over here passes these little parts that come up. And those are called papillary muscles. So electricity comes here, papillary muscles will move down. That's going to allow these valves to open and then eventually close really quickly. As the current starts to go down, it's going to split. And that's going to be in these bundle branches where we go ahead and start to split. And that's going to make it so these ventricles open and become really big. These definitely are closed. These tricuspid and bicuspid valves are closed. And what we're trying to do at the Purkinje fibers is we're going to go ahead and have the electrical current go up this way and this way simultaneously. So what's going to happen is these ventricles will start to squeeze in. And let's look at this side just first. So as the ventricles squeeze in, remember the tricuspid valve is closed, right? So blood can only go out the pulmonaries and leave to go to the lungs. On this side, blood is down here, right? In the ventricles. So this would be left or right ventricle. No, I guess it says it right there. Left atrium. So this would be the left ventricle. Um, the left ventricle will start to squeeze and blood will actually go up the aorta and either go to the head or to the feet. So this is going to happen because of action potential. And if you remember back from 201, with those voltage gated channels and how we have the sodium coming in, the potassium and that created a little bit of chemical energy that turned into electrical energy. I kind of left these here just as sort of a quick recap for you but just to see if you have it. And if you don't have it, you could just go back. I'm going to put an action potential sort of um, video in just to sort of catch you back up. The skeletal muscle is sort of happens in about two milliseconds. The cardiac happens in about 200 milliseconds, which obviously I hope you know it's faster. What's the difference? What happens when the skeletal muscle contracts and occurs in the sequence? And then what would happen? If, would this be okay? So what happens is the difference is going to be tetanus. Tetanus is when the muscle contracts to its complete ends. And why would this be okay in skeletal muscle, but not cardiac muscle? Heart muscle would not pump if it was in tetanus. It wouldn't be able to relax fast enough and do this back and forth. So it can't go to complete tetanus where your skeletal muscle can. So there are external and inter, uh, controls of heart rate. Normally the heart will sort of move on its own. It's sort of autonomic. That means you don't have to think about it. But during two different times, you might be able to play with it a little bit and mess with its pumping. The sympathetic nervous system is also known as fight or flight, and that's going to speed up the heart rate, which makes a lot of sense. And the parasympathetic nervous system which is also known as rest and digest, is going to slow down. So that's going to slow your heart rate down. And this is all controlled by the medulla oblongata, which we talked about right at the end of 201. And it basically controls how quick or how slow your heart works, so you don't have to think about it. We also talked about that lub-dub um, reaction. Here's what it sounds like.
So that larger, louder noise is the lub, and that's when the valves are opening. Those are going to be the SA nodes or the, uh, sorry, the um, tricuspid or bicuspid valves. We also call them the atrioventricular valves, which just means it's the valve between the atrium and the ventricle. The softer dub is going to be closed, occurring because of those semilunar valves in the aorta and the pulmonaries closing. So let's listen to it again, now that we know what that is. You can see the louder one is definitely the tricuspid, bicuspid, and the softer one is the semilunar.